Hey friends. I've been so hesitant to uh, get in front of the camera and just turn it on for some time now. As you can see by all the video toys I've been playing with. But I figured what the heck. So, here I am. Uh, things are slightly better. Maybe we'll just leave it at that. Um, they are improving. It's It's been one heck of a hard slog, though. Okay. Cuddles. <clears throat> Gotta have the windows open. But lights on, windows open in Arkansas equals cat chasing bugs that are on the other side of the screen. So that's the sound effects. Uh, I don't really have anything huge to report at this point. But I come to you because I do have something huge to share, to give. Uh, although it can't be given, you have to take it for yourself. And that is a relaxation. Lightening up. and shifting perspective. I wish I could give everyone the vision of what it's like not to be me, but to be in heart and to be so aware. I guess what it is is our egos are dying, friends, or, or the false self, the uh, construct that we have believed in and created and we thought it was us for such a long time. Everything that's good and true about that remains. Everything that isn't is melting in the rising frequencies. It just can't handle the heat. And so it goes. Not the most comfortable scenario, but you know, think about it. We didn't incarnate here at this particular time in order to just be comfortable. That's no part of it. Now, my camera just flashed on and off. I don't know what that's going to do to the video. I hardly have anything on. It shouldn't be misbehaving. Uh, this isn't a time for comfort. So let's stop feeling sorry for ourselves, okay? Every one of us, to one extent or another, has been trained to play the victim role to point fingers of blame, to judge their neighbor, and life, and to be miserable. And it's such a, you don't have to do it kind of a thing. It, it's, it's so much in our power. And as we take our power back, we can relax. We can remember that we're divine. Now, when I say there is no judgment in heart or in 5D, in my experience, there's no, no one can give this to you. But I assure you, 100%, you have to step out of the mind in order to experience it because mind is the instrument of judgment, right? You can see that. It's easy enough. Lightening up 
and stepping back help keep our sanity. There's no need to suffer. Now I know that sounds crazy from someone who has to take narcotics because the pain in the body is that great. But I don't suffer. I experience pain. There's a big difference. The pain is mandatory. I, I don't see how to get around that. Or I would have. But suffering is something we choose to do. We just don't know that we're choosing it. It's, oh, computer, come on, behave for me. I hope it's not interfering with the recording. Uh, suffering is not mandatory. It's, it's just how we've been taught. But we can cast it off. Attitude is everything in some ways, right? You know people who are cheerful in the midst of whatever comes. And you know people who, even when they've got it really good, are grouchy and nasty and maybe even mean. So it doesn't have anything to do with your circumstances. You can divorce yourself from your circumstances. You can. It's a choice. But it's pretty important to stop trusting your mind when it tells you this or that, when it evaluates things. There's a whole new way of knowing from within. And it's more of a sensing of things. It's just an immediacy. It's an isness. It's just a knowing. You don't have to evaluate things. Now, sometimes it's useful to do that. And so, you know, we can call on the mind and that's fine. But the better we get at steering our course from within, deeper inside, it's different. And I have no proof for you, nor ability to make it happen for you. That's in your hands. It's part of playing the victim to think that, that you're powerless, just like we've been trained. And we can recognize, even in our dreams, when you have a lucid dream, you can recognize, and if it's a nightmare, you can stop it. Uh, we do a lot of work on the inner something that's really useful or it was something that was really useful to me in shedding reliance on letting mind lead the way was awareness that even if we're just looking at our own 3D presence and the mind here being the subconscious, the unconscious, and the conscious, and even the superconscious, we have a small part of that that we're commonly present with, and that's the conscious mind. Might as well say left brain while you're at it or 99% of us, 98% of us, that's the way of it until we make a different choice. No one ever told us we could make a choice about something like that. They convinced us instead that this was reality. This is not reality. This is the teen, einsiest little slice of who and what we are. I mean, of who and what we are, we probably have 1% of us present in 3D. And then, 
of that 1%, the conscious mind is perhaps the smallest slice of those four aspects of mind. Unconscious, subconscious, conscious, and superconscious. And people, every day of the week, are making decisions based on nothing whatsoever but the conscious mind. They're not there. They're not fully present. They're cramped up. We get cramped up in this little thing called the conscious mind, so limited. And of course we get frustrated thinking that that's all there is, that that's what reality is, that this is what it is. Uh-uh. You're more. You're so much more. Can you relax into that? I guess what's it going to take will be answered differently for everyone what the magic is. Your higher self knows. Do you find yourself getting more intuitive? That would be good if we can begin to at least self-observe, to turn the focus away from the world, which doesn't really exist as we think it does and on to the self and just keep watching the self just be be myself and I be aware that I is let's call it your I am presence your your higher self and then the me is going to be you in the conscious mind and then let myself be the one that's watching and you occupy all of them. You're not limited, but as long as you believe you are, then you are. You're in charge to a much greater extent than you have any inkling of. You're in charge. So if you can lighten up let go and relax into this, into at least some of it. It'll be wonderful. The pain's still here, you know. Uh, it's gotten so tough that uh, it brings to mind the something of the soul dark night of the soul and I, I think it might be lightening up but I hesitate to say anything because I don't want to hex it as we become self aware one thing we can do is begin to watch our use of language language is phenomenally powerful and we use it to hex ourselves and to tie ourselves up in knots and to put ourselves in prison all the time. We do it to ourselves. Ignorance is no excuse because we do know. And it's a time of waking up and remembering. So, like I've said before, be careful when you say I am and then you say this or that after it. Be darn sure that whatever you say after it is something that you want to be. Those are powerful words. All words are. So, much as I wish, I could just reach out and give you an infusion, you know. Uh, you have to find it within. Nobody can do it for you. And everyone who's looking for some kind of something huge and special to solve everything on 1221, 
I would do what I could to back away from that. And that way, if something wonderful happens, great. You know, you'll be ready for it. But if it doesn't, you won't be so devastated that you'll be vulnerable to who knows what. You know, I think a lot of people will be going into tailspin and depression when on that particular day they don't ascend into the next dimension or density. And uh, that'll be a weight and a burden upon the rest of us, by the way. Even if you're doing fine and you know better than to have expectations like that, even if your ducks are pretty much in a row, uh, when we have masses of people experiencing something, we feel it. You better believe we do. So, you know, tighten your girdle for 1221 just to handle the backlash of the people. Uh, when midnight comes around, that are depressed and lost. Forlorn, feeling deserted, sad. These are things we can't run away from that easily. Nobody's going to come and rescue us. We are the rescue squad. We just have to wake up to it. And things like that are part of our dark side. Everybody has a dark side. And a rescue is a way to run away from it instead of welcoming it, dealing with it, sitting with it, and integrating it and finding your point of balance. We can transmute that. It will happen naturally. But things are so crazy in this time that we're living in, I think it's that's what's made me so fond of balance. What else can you do when everything is just insane and people who think they're totally sane and know what they're doing are destroying the world and making phenomenally stupid decisions? And they're in places of power, so they're making these decisions for the... I mean, it's crazy. It is really crazy. And they all think they're sane. Well, you know, maybe your ammunition against falling into that is to find your sanity within heart. And you might not be understood by very many folks. I mean, there are a lot of people that reject what I say on the face of it. And that's fine, you know. We can all be a, a bird that sings a different tune. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but we're brethren. We're family. And as we come together and share our particular tune, it helps, you know. It makes the forest a more beautiful place when they're all singing, doesn't it? So we each have to find our own song, our heart song. It's in there. You are divine. It's the mind that thinks that's crazy. You don't. You're not the mind. What's it going to take? for you to recognize and come to grips with this. You are not the mind. Therefore, everything it says isn't who you are and what you are and what you have to believe. Besides, it's, it's like science, you know? Uh, theories last what? An average, isn't it, about 20 years? And they're all laughed at and shouted down to begin with as ridiculous, like hand washing, you know? 
Oh, doctors were on their high horse about that. They thought it was insane, this whole theory that there were these little invisible things. Yeah, right, they said. And for the modern man then, and mostly it was men that were doctors, that made perfect sense. That was perfect logic. It was illogical to think that there could be little invisible thingies running around that couldn't be seen. They could only be seen by the evidence, by the trail they left of dead moms because the doctors didn't wash their hands. So, we're not so modern, my friends. We're not so know-it-all. We just think we are. That's mind. And that's okay. It's not bad or anything. It's just something that we're leaving behind. We're transcending. We're so much more than that, it's ridiculous. So, let the crazy ones who think they're sane, let them be the ones that rely so much on their own mind. I don't, I don't know much at all, if anything. But the way I see that playing out is that those who can't break their reliance on mind, and some people just aren't ready to, and if they would find their way into heart, even then they would lean more towards mind, whatever your development is, whatever's the absolute best for you, is what you're going to get. And you don't have to put any effort into it. We've been fed since babies on lies and vaccines and poisons and things. No wonder stuff is nuts here. All right? So, sing your own tune. Find your joy and pursue it. Start shifting your attitudes. Whenever you find yourself down on yourself, stop. Back up and look at that. Just quietly ponder for a moment. You'll get to where you're really quick to be able to spot mind at work. Mind is the problem maker. There are no problems in heart. Challenges? Sure. There's no suffering in heart. Pain? Yeah. I mean, look around. Look at the way nature is treated. The animals. The helpless. You know. Um, there's pain enough to go around and guess what? That's you. That's me. Those starving babies and mothers, families, that's not somebody else. There's no such thing as somebody else. We're all one. It's only one. And I begin to think language is the tool that was used to separate us out at the Tower of, of Babel. Babel, however it said. I'm not from there. We were one. My bet is we didn't even need to use language before the quote-unquote gods came down and mucked with us. Okay? You think that's God? I don't think so. Those were ETs, my friends. Playing around. wanting beings to worship them so they could feed on the energy of it. Language is what... I'll put a video with this. Now, if you've been with me a while, you know I don't particularly appreciate what Bashar is because he's a, a, a gray human hybrid and an ambassador for that program. 
and I won't go into why I don't like it here. I just don't. But truth is truth. And lately, I've found myself listening to quite a number of his videos. He's got one called Definitions. I think it's only nine or ten minutes, something like that. When you define, you separate. That's what a word is for, to isolate something from everything else. Do you see? Separation is perhaps the original lie. Now, it's something we bought into intentionally, so no whining about it, all right? We chose this. We needed it, or we couldn't play a part here. We couldn't have a 3D avatar and take part in the play without the sense, at least some sense, of individuality and of separation. The thing is, we're the gods too, and we forgot. And, you know, I don't care if I lose subscribers over stuff like this. I don't care. You find your song to sing, and I'm going to applaud you and your song no matter how different it is from mine. Just because I choose to believe something doesn't mean you have to. But I share just because I love doing it, I guess. And words and language have been the powerful tool that separated us out. So there's brother against brother, there's divide and conquer, and all of that kind of thing. A house divided against itself cannot stand. Well, we're coming together. Those of us waking up are very much coming together. And even though you might not yet be aware of your divine nature and your divine status and the fullness of your power, I don't think any of us are aware of that. You can do what you can do. All there is is now and all there is is here. And in the now here, if you'll just stay in the now here, be in heart, it'll be obvious what to do, what to say. You know, it'll be, there's a flow that you can hook up with and that you can ride on. You know, maybe heart is like a portal, a stargate. It's, it's a window on cosmos that's entirely different from anything the mind ever dreamed up or ever could dream up. I don't care how good they are with sci-fi. There's no way this is conveyed. It has to be experienced. But you have to step out and do it. And it's radical. It's a radical shift. It'll rock your world. It'll shake your consciousness. You game? What's so good about what you've got that you're clinging to it. Another thing about being in heart is that there's no fear there. Also, just knowing that you're divine, once you let that belief in, you know, check it out on a trial basis, wear it around quietly. Don't share this with people that aren't waking up asking for trouble. That's crazy. No go there. Uh, you'll find that as it worms its way down in among all of your false beliefs, you know, and you'll be pulling the weeds out right and left from your belief garden uh, because there are so many beliefs that go against your divinity. As that process matures, you begin 
to see what fearlessness tastes like and what it feels like. Now, you don't have to be divine in order to be fearless. There are many ways to come at this. You can also come at it just by knowing that you're consciousness. You're not the 3D avatar here, the body-mind thing. This isn't me. This is about a hair's breadth this whole life, even though it's close to 60 years a hair's breadth in the eternity of time <laughs> that whatever I am has been around. I think we're original equipment at this point. You know, you can try on any idea, no matter how radical, and try it out. See how it behaves, see how you behave, see how it handles, see, because um, when you take on a new belief, even for a trial run, it will bring up everything that's in you that goes against it. And that's not negative, it'll, it'll look negative maybe, but that's positive, that's a wonderful thing, that's your opportunity to pull those weeds, they've been limiting you. There is no belief that is not also a limit of some kind or another. They limit our vision. What you believe is what you get. What you believe is what you see. You have to change your beliefs before your vision will change. Okay, I guess I've been all over the page here. My desire was to bring some comfort. There's none of us that, that needs to be arrogant in any way, shape, or form or to think we're better than anyone else because this is just a hair's breadth. This is just 1% or less. This embodiment of who and what you are. You have loads of lifetimes running around now, here, and you have not always been a saint. No one has. That's not the way of it. We're too curious for that. We want experience. That's one of the main reasons we do this. We want different experiences. We are all powerful. But we have to leave the all-powerfulness completely behind in order to play this kind of a game. Well, just check out my videos, okay? I think there's at least 1,200 of them now. Get onto the page of my videos and whatever you're interested in, put it in the search box. I, I've done a pretty good job with my tags. So, uh, you should be able to find something that your heart is calling you to. Your heart talks to you 24-7. But we have to be silent to hear it. And that doesn't have anything to do with whether your mouth is running or not because that's not who you are. The body is not who you are. Silent is an interior thing. And the mind hamster wheeling along, even if your mouth is shut, that's not silence. You know where it can be found. I don't think I have to tell you. It's all beautiful. I don't want to blow you away too much, but it's all beautiful. Even the starving children and mothers and the animals, but you have to be in heart because mind ain't having no part of that and it rejects it. It judges it. 
in its arrogance, thinking what's right is obvious. Well, folks, all those insane people out there are very convinced that they're the sane ones. And there's a lot of us that are waking up that know better. So you have to take some risks here. I mean, if you can't cast off at least some of the beliefs that society and school, home and family and peers inculcated within you there, then you haven't got what it takes. But you do. You do. If it's too scary to come at it in your waking consciousness, work with your dreams. Set yourself up one thing, one something that you want to work on or understand or tackle or master or whatever. And every night, every night, every night, every night before you go to sleep, read it and ponder it deeply and hold it in mind as you're falling asleep. We're more empowered in our dreams, aren't we? Especially if we're lucid dreamers. But we're more empowered anyway because things can change so easily, just a thought, just in anything, and it's just different. Well, your waking life is every bit as much of a dream. It's just a different phase maybe a different frequency, but it's a dream that we're waking up from. Be brave. You've got it in you. Talk to you later. Namaste.